I'm Pastor David Jock, lead pastor of the Kingdom Church here in Orlando, Florida. I wanna thank you for tuning in to our channel. I wanna say that it is not by accident that you are here, but by divine purpose. If this message is adding value to you, would you share it? Would you send it to a friend and subscribe? Would love to stay in contact with you in all the things that we believe God has given us to inspire, encourage, enlighten you. God bless, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Go to Matthew chapter number 16, Matthew chapter number 16, and there's something I want to share with you, and thank you, sir. Y'all are so first class around here. I tell you, they won't let you do nothing around here. Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. In other words, they had no clue. They did not know. And he said to them, meaning the disciples now, he says, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, which is the Greek word Christos, which means the anointed one or one that has been smeared on and rubbed on the son of the living God. Jesus said unto him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I say to you, Mm, mm, mm. Say that after me. And I say say to you. you. And he says to him, thou art Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, Don't have time to get into all of that. I want to focus right on this. Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus turned right around and said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. My father had to do that. And then he says, since you got a revelation of me, watch this, let me give you a revelation of you. And he turns around and says, and thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want to talk to you from a title, The Mystery of Identity. The Mystery of Identity. Say that after me. The Mystery mystery. of Identity. identity. Come on, I'm not your pastor, but I'm your big brother, so I got to be a good little bold to some of you hard-headed people that didn't say nothing to nobody. Say that after me. Say the mystery mystery of identity. I'm just messing with you. I'm excited to be here. So I'm going to be a mess for the next 40 minutes. The mystery of identity. The mystery of identity. The Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me sometime back and began to challenge me. And said, Isaac, I've called you to do more than preach the gospel. I've called you to demonstrate the gospel you preach. In other words, I did just call you to talk about it. I called you to be a manifestation of it. And then to bring the body of Christ into the same manifestation. 
And he says, in order for you to get there, there is a revelation that you need about me that you don't have. And whenever the Spirit of the Lord starts speaking like that, you know he's pulling you into something deeper. And he began to unfold to me out of this verse a revelation that I thought I had, but I did not have. And it is this revelation that he said upon he would build the church. So that means I can't be the church until I get this revelation. Because we are shifting from an age where God is no longer concerned with us having church. We have actually got to become the church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. So the church is not a building. The church are a people God is building. And so he says, I'm, I'm trying to produce something in people. I'm working out something inside of people. And when I get through working this out, then the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Which means I'm bringing people to such a level that even the enemy cannot deal with them. How many of you ready to get to a level where nothing the enemy tries can prevail against you? The Bible declares that that is possible and that's what Jesus came to build. So I begin to dive into this revelation and I saw it. I saw it like I've never seen it before. After preaching up until that point of last year, almost 25 years of full-time ministry and preaching and all of that, I finally saw something that Peter saw. And Jesus asked the question when he was getting ready now to transition from moving off the scene and giving birth to the kingdom of heaven in the earth and giving birth to the church, he asked this question. He says, I've been here for 33 and a half years. I have been walking around the earth. I've been working signs, wonders, and miracles. I've been doing demonstrations of the glory and manifest presence of God. And I want to know what is the word out about me? In other words, I've been doing all of this for about three and a half years now since I came out the Jordan River. And he asked a question. He says, do people know who I am? So who are they saying I am? Now, this is amazing to me because he asked a question because he knew they had no answer. But he knew the time for the answer to be revealed had come. And so he asked him, who are men saying that I am? And look at the answers that some of these people came up with. Some say you're John the Baptist. I thought he was beheaded. But they were so confused by Jesus that some say maybe he's John the Baptist. Even though John the Baptist was a forerunner for him, John the Baptist's disciples were sent to him, but they're so confused, they don't know what he is. And so some say John the Baptist. Then they start dipping back into the old covenant. Maybe some Elijah, you know, he was caught up in a whirlwind. Maybe he's back. Maybe he's Elijah, come back again. And then the Bible declares, some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In other words, they had no clue who he was. They saw the miracles. They were beneficiaries of the miracles, the signs, the wonders. But they did not know who he was. This is the mystery of his identity. That even though he was around them, they did not know him. And so he says, you mean I've been in your midst and you had no idea who I was. And they said, well, yeah, that's just what they're saying. They're saying you wanted them. Then he looks at them and he says, you've been with me for three and a half years and you've seen the glory of God 
who do you say I am? And a hush fell among the disciples because they had to come to grips with the fact that we don't know either. That I've been following you, but I don't know you. <laughs> I've been sleeping with you, eating with you, walking with you, working with you, but I don't know you. And Jesus knew they didn't know because his identity was hidden in a dimension that they could not see into yet. And when he asked him, who do you say that I am? Notice none of them said you're Mary's son. Or Joseph's boy. No, they knew this question was so deep that they did not have the knowledge in which to extract the wisdom of God to get an answer to the revelation that would be the revealing of his true identity. And silence fell among them as they began to drop their heads because they had no clue either. And then God. Pull back the veil of heaven and gave Peter a revelation. And that's what the word revelation means. It means an unveiling. A revelation means that something was there all the time, but you just couldn't see it. And so God has to pull back the cover so he can reveal it to you. And at this moment, this question that Jesus asked, the heavens came open and a download of revelation came to Peter. And Peter says, I got it. I got it. I got it. I see it. I see it. That's why we couldn't understand you. We saw you working miracles. And we knew you were human. We just didn't know what kind of human you were. When we saw you walk on water, we knew what is it about this man that he does things in a supernatural dimension that nobody is able to do. What is it about this man that is physical enough to weep at the tomb of Lazarus and then dries his eye? And says, come for it. Who is he? This man that seems to be human, but yet he looks divine. <laughs> he, he does things on a level no man has ever done before. Who is he that speaks to winds and waves and they obey? What kind of man would us being fishermen can fish all night and catch nothing? And he'd jump on the boat and all the fish come around the boat. What kind of man is this? And Peter says, I got it. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living and just like Peter, I saw it. The thing that Jesus has been trying to reveal to us and reveal to his church, the revelation that Peter got and the one I got last year was that the thing that made Jesus such a mystery, that he was not just a man. He was the son of the living God as a man. <laughs> he, 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 was, he was the offspring of God wrapped in flesh. <laughs> he, he was God's child sent to us to show us the identity of what a man looks like with glory on. You got it, didn't you? You got it, you got it, you got it. He says, you're not just a man, you are the son of the living God as a man. 
And Jesus looked at him and says, you got it, boy. And the only way you could have got that is my father had to reveal that to you. And the reason is, it's because nobody had ever seen a son that was a man in the earth realm. That's why they didn't know what to call him. They didn't know why he did and how he did what he did because nobody had ever seen God have a baby. No, no, nobody had ever seen God send a child into the earth realm. God had never seen someone that was his offspring wrapped in flesh and walk among us. And we see the son of the living God. And Jesus says, watch this now. He says, he says, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. My father, which is in heaven, had to reveal that to you. That the true identity is that I am not just Mary's boy and Joseph's boy. In other words, Jesus says, I had to come reveal this to you. But I didn't come to just reveal it to you. I came to give it back to you. Because he turns right around after Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Watch with me now. Watch with me. These next 10 minutes are crucial. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus looked at him and says, now that you know who I am, let me turn around, Peter, and show you who you are. He says, your name ain't Simon. Your true identity ain't the one your mama and daddy gave you either. Your true identity is Peter. In other words, there is a part of you that you identify from your natural parents. But then there's a part of you that has a spiritual identity. And you will never be great to what God has called you until you put your spiritual identity and your natural identity together. Oh, you didn't hear me. What I'm trying to tell you is that you are greater than anything you have even imagined. Some of you don't even know your name yet. You know what your mama called you, but do you know what your daddy called you? Some of you have not slipped into the real dimension in which you were created and born to be because it takes a revelation. From the Father to tell you who you are. Ooh Some of you, your life will never be the same after today. Because somewhere during this service, or whether you're laying in bed at night and it finally hits you, God is going to introduce you to yourself. And once he tells you who you are, and once he reveals to you who you really are, there ain't no devil in hell that can stop you from becoming what God created you to be. But you got to get a revelation of who am I? And Jesus says, that's what I came into the earth. I came into the earth to show you who I was. And then I came into the earth to show you who you are. Now, why is that significant? The reason that is significant it's because, oh God, put your hand on your head. Come on, put your hand on your head. Say, I received this word this morning. The reason this is significant, that you've got to know who he is in order to get a revelation of who you are. It's because whoever you are is a part of who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ephesians chapter number four says something so amazing. It says, when Jesus came out the grave, now this is powerful. You can just go back and read it. Ephesians chapter number four around verse number 10 and just go on down to the rest of the chapter because it's all good. It says something like this. It says, when Jesus ascended on high, which means he came out the grave, led captivity captive 
The Bible declares something happened. The Bible says, and he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. But then when you back up to verse number 11, it says, and he gave gifts of himself to us. Who? Which, <laughs> which means when Jesus came out the grave, he came out giving gifts. Now watch this because he, he didn't go to Neiman Marcus. He didn't. <laughs> He, he didn't go to Walmart. He didn't go to Tars Us. He, he, didn't go, he didn't go anywhere to get gifts. The Bible says the gifts that he gave were of himself. Which means he came out the grave passing out himself. What? <laughs> What kind of God can be so amazing when he searches through all the annals of his omniscience and says, what is the best thing that I could give you after my resurrection? Searches all his mind and says, I can't come up with nothing better than me. <laughs> and starts giving you some of him. Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm a gift from God. <laughs> Oh, come on, you don't believe it. I say, lay your hands on yourself and say, I'm a gift from God. A gift from God. Somewhere he put his DNA in me. Who? When you get this revelation, and understand how fearfully and wonderfully and marvelous you are created. All of insecurity. Oh my God. You can almost boil down every issue we deal with with a lack of identity. When you drill all the way down to it, it's a lack of knowing who we are. Because if we knew who we were, we wouldn't have fear. If we knew who we were, we, we wouldn't be timid. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be shameful. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be anxious. We wouldn't have anxiety. And the reason I know that is because the true identity of who we are is the true identity of who he is. And so in essence, Jesus came to reveal to me my identity. And so when I'm looking at Jesus, I'm looking at my pedigree. Oh, my God. That I'm not reading this just to read it. I'm reading this so I can live it. Because when I read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, I'm looking at my potential. Good God. I'm looking at what's capable to be done by a son of God that's a man in the earth. I'm looking at the identity of what somebody walks like, talks like, acts like, looks like in the earth realm when they are born from God. And may I humbly submit to you that the church has been stuck in this transition. What is the transition, Isaac Petrie? The transition is we have celebrated Jesus for who he is, but have not duplicated Jesus in who we are. We got the songs about him. We got it. Come on. We got the music, the dance, the sermons, the preachers. We got the titles. We got all of that. 
We got the trinkets. We got everything about him when he says, I did not come so you could just talk about me and preach about me and sing about me. I didn't come just to be celebrated. Now, don't get me wrong. He is worthy of any more glory. All the glory, we can't even give him the glory that he's truly worthy of. Like the team was trying to lead us today and Pastor David got up talking about what he's worth and what's due him. We can't even scratch the surface of it but in all that we do Jesus is saying I don't just want to hear you talk about me yeah, I want to see myself in you and it's time for the body of Christ to come to the next level that we have been going through a global reset in the church and I believe God is shifting things in the church taking even this messy pandemic and working things together for his good to reset the church so that we would begin to shift from church membership into kingdom sonship that the church that's got to break out now, it can't just be a singing, shouting, dancing, preaching church. It's got to be a church that when you walk out of the building and into your house, or better yet, Monday morning into that job, they ought to know that a son of the living God just walked in the room. This has got to be a move of the offspring of God in the earth, demonstrating who he is. And now let me show you that this was your destiny and my destiny. So now what I'm about to say to you, I do not preach as one that has arrived. But I sure done left the house. Your Bible declares that Jesus showed up to show them that I am the son of the living God as a man. And then he says, upon that revelation, I will build my church. Which means you can't start becoming the church until you get this revelation. That he was the son of God as a man. Now, why must you have that revelation in order to transition into becoming what God has created you to be? Because when Jesus was on the earth, he was the only one. But he wasn't the first one. <laughs> In order for you to understand Jesus, you got to understand Genesis. And this is the mystery, see. Because your Bible declares in Genesis chapter number one, God said, let us make man. And then male and female, he made them. In his image, after his likeness, and say, let them have dominion. So when God created humanity, mankind, Adam and Eve, God created them as his offspring. Which means the first son of God wasn't Christ, it was Adam. This is why your Bible declares that Paul calls Jesus the last Adam. Why does he call him the last Adam? Number one, because there'll never be a need for another. But number two, because he was a different in a succession of the first. That's why the same verse calls him the second man, Adam. Now, why is this important? Ooh, God, I can't believe y'all are, you know, y'all are so deep in the word that y'all are actually allowing me to get this revelation out. I can't tell you how many churches I go to that I can't even get to this part because they can't handle it. But look at your neighbor and say, do you want the truth? 
Tell them, say, you can't have. No, don't tell them that. <laughs> watch, 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 watch this, watch this. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of there. And so God went to the dust of the ground, formed man from the dust of the ground, <sighs> breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam got up. And when Adam began to walk around, he was the first begotten of God. He, he came, his body came from the dust, but then his spirit came from God. And so Adam was divinity in humanity. He had the mind of God. God in him, uh, and then Eve came along, and they all walked together in the cool of the evening. When God and Adam and Eve, when they got together in the garden, they were not there to have church. <laughs> they, they were not there singing hymns and, and all of those things. None of that was in it because, because they didn't have to be taught God. They, they caught God. See, see, when, when, he breathed, when he breathed inside of them, they didn't have to go to Sunday school. They, they didn't have to come to church. They didn't have to listen to a preacher. They didn't have to have an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. They got it with the breath. They got it. <laughs> Say, I got it when he breathed on me. I got it when he breathed on me. I got it when he breathed on me. He breathed in him, and in him came the download of Jehovah. And Adam and Eve walked around in that garden like children of the Most High God. And God turned the whole planet over them and said, have dominion. Can I paraphrase this and fast forward it? Oh, somebody say, go ahead and do it. Satan is looking at this saying, I can't have this. I can't have them in the earth in God's image after his likeness with dominion over me. He said, I can't have this because in essence, when Satan was looking at Adam and Eve, oh my God, he was looking at them through an eye of jealousy. Because the reason the devil hates you and he hates mankind it's not for anything spiritual it's about power in other words when he looks at you he sees everything he ever wanted to be oh y'all don't know what i'm saying <laughs> oh no <laughs> no your bible declares that satan was sitting up looking at god saying i will ascend into the heavens i want a throne like that i want dominion like that i want power like that and the bible says he said in his heart that i'm going to ascend to heaven to make a long story short jesus read his mind the father read his mind and at the very thought of him ascending up the Bible declares God said, no, you won't, and he went down. <laughs> like lightning, he was cast down. He was cast down into the earth because he was no longer wanting to worship God. He wanted to be like God. God said, you were not created to be like me. You were created to worship and serve me. God threw Satan down to the earth, then came into the earth, scooped up some dust, breathed into it, and said, you have dominion, you have power, you rule like me, you talk like me, you walk like me, and the devil is saying, that ain't fair, because everything you just gave him is what I wanted. <laughs> You don't hear what I'm saying. He hates you because he knows you got power. He hates you because he knows you got authority. He hates you because God crowned you with glory. He hates you because God puts you over him. He hates you because God gave to you everything he wanted and then put him under your feet. That's why it is an insult to let the devil run your life. It is an insult to let the enemy come in and out of your life. It's an insult because you were not created to run from devils. You were created to cast them out. But you got to know your identity. Oh, 
somebody shout, I know who I am. And I'm telling you, principalities and powers are shaking right now. The enemy is shaking right now because when we find out who we are and start functioning in the authority that we have, we're going to break every curse, every generational curse. We're going to break every spirit of oppression and deception because we've been anointed as children of the Most High God. Stand up on your feet. I got to finish this. I got to finish it. Stand up. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Watch this. Because now you will understand the mystery of identity. We were all supposed to be born out of Adam and out of Eve. We were supposed to be born with the mind of God in total authority and dominion until everything on this planet knows who we are and submits to us. We were supposed to be born with no fear, no shame. We were supposed to be born with no sin. We were supposed to be the offspring of God. But then the saddest verse in your Bible, God tells Adam, Adam, you're my son, but you're still not me. So you still got to obey me. You can eat of every tree in the garden except mine. That tree is devoted to me. Don't mess with my tree. You know the story. Satan comes into the garden, deceives them. They eat of the tree and they died. They didn't die physically because they lived to be 930 years old. But they lost the DNA. They lost the identity. God literally disinherited them as children of the Most High God, kicked them out of the garden. And for 4,000 years, we wondered without our identity, without knowing who we were. We wondered in sin and shaping in iniquity. We wondered. We wondered having to have bulls and goats cleanse us for, for atonements. And we wondered dealing with oppression and captivity and all of that because we did not know our true identity because we lost it in Adam. But after 4,000 years, <laughs> oh, we find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and Jesus pops out the womb and says I came to show you what you lost in other words when you're looking at me I want you to see your identity this is your glory this is your authority and when Peter said you are the son of the living God Jesus says that's what I came to show you but I didn't just come to show it to you I'm about to go into hell for three days in three nights and when I come back up I'm not going to be the only son I'm going to be the first one among many brethren y'all don't hear what I'm saying and I came to tell you that you are more than just a sinner saved by grace you are more than just a member of TKC you are a son and daughter of the most high God and it's time you act like it Lift your hands, this revelation is getting into you. We are not just church people. We are not just church folk. We are not just a religious sect. We are the children of the Most High God. Woo! And when you begin to walk in your identity, When you understand that you were born royalty. That Jesus says, he says, I didn't come to just show you that I'm the son of God. I came to make you a son of God. 
And what I've been doing these last three years, Jesus says, is I've been modeling sonship. I've been showing you what you lost in Adam. I've been showing you what the Father really created you to be like. And when the Lord gave me this revelation, he said this to me. He says, Isaac, can you come on up, Reverend, because I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to, to sing over us for just a second. But I want you to stand right there. For, the, for, for Just stand right there. Watch this. He says, Isaac, you were supposed to be born out of me. You and I were supposed to be one. You were my child. But when Adam sinned, I had to kick you out the garden. And you were distanced from your true identity. But then when you meet Jesus, he says, when you meet Jesus, I don't need you to just go to church. I need you to turn around and head back to where you were originally created. Because Jesus is who I'm really created to be like. See, this is why I try not to sin. I try to live holy. I try to live not for some report card. It ain't about rules and regulations. It's about kingdom culture. It's about understanding that I am a child of the Most High God. And Jesus is my identity. And every day, I'm supposed to be getting closer. Now you say, well, I'm saved and I ain't really trying to be all that deep. Here's what you don't understand. When you got saved, God did something just like he did to Peter that you don't know about. Before you got born again, you do realize you were living in a fake identity. It really wasn't your real identity. And now you get born again. And if you don't head toward Jesus, you will never get a revelation of who you were created to be. Because every revelation of him gives me a greater revelation of myself. That's why the Bible says we go from glory to glory. What are we trying to get to? We're trying to get there. 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 And I came to tell you, I don't care about your past. I want you to just get ready to sing something over us. I don't care about what happened to you. I don't care where you were born, who loved you, who didn't love you, who abandoned you, who didn't like you, whether you have degrees and don't have degrees, no matter what you think about yourself. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you became a son and daughter of the most high. Your daddy is Jehovah Jireh. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Your daddy is Jehovah Rapha. That's your father. And what I need you to do from this day forward is act like it. See, I'll be able to tell it because, see, I'll hear it in your talk. Your identity leaks out of your mouth. It leaks out of your decisions. And today, what's about to happen to you is the spirit of adoption is about to hit you. 
that when you leave here, watch me, watch me. When you leave here today, something supernaturally is going to be alive on the inside of you. You're, you're never going to be able to go back to normal. You, you're you never going to be able to go back. You're not going to be able to go back. You're not going to be able to go back. Close your eyes. Whew, hallelujah. Hey, glory. You are for me. Not against Woo. I am who you say I am. Come on, lift your hands and get that in you. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. When the sun sets free, he is free in me. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am. Let that get in you. Not against me. I am who you say I am. Not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Now, I want to pray over you. Those watching me and those here. If you haven't made Jesus your Savior, now you know what he came to save you from. He came to reintroduce you to yourself. He came to give you life and that more abundantly. He came to give you your authority back, your peace back. Everything lost in Adam was restored in Christ and it is time for us to walk in it. I wanna pray two prayers for those to be born again and those that are born again. That from this day forward, you will walk in the revelation of who you are and that God would begin to reveal to you like he did to Peter what is your God-given DNA who you were born and created to be that you would walk in the royalty of God in the authority of God in the inheritance of the Lord and I came to tell you no weapon formed against you is going to prosper it doesn't matter what the devil does in this earth realm. You're going to be victorious because God has given us authority to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And I decree nothing shall by any means harm you. I pray that you would see yourself, that you would see yourself in him, that you would see yourself created in his image and his likeness that all fear insecurity doubt all shame all of it just begins to just flood out of your spirit and you walk in the true identity of who we are now lift your hands and receive it i trust the holy spirit to impart this word in you this is the mystery of your true identity and we thank you father I am who you say I am. 